Oi, 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 oi. Oké, okay, oké, okay, oké. Okay. Hey op. Hallo, hey op. How do? Top it, no. My left arm is completely dead. Why? Uh, Too much mass to think. Lefty? No. Huh. no uh, I was doing, doing a first aid course arm. today. And uh, as part of that, we have to do like multiple rounds of CPR to be assessed to get the qualification. Mm. Uh, and like we've done like 20 fucking rounds of like 30 reps each. So like my left arm is just like it's you would it's surprising the amount of force for anyone that's never done a first aid course. The amount of force you have like to use way on CPR. I think I had like a mandatory one in high school or some shit. It's better to break someone's rib than it is for them to die because that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Beating. One of my colleagues was like. What happens if you injure them? And it's like, if you don't injure them, you're not doing it hard. Yeah, yeah. To... and if you don't injure them, they'll die. Smile. So. Yeah, it's, it's that thing of like, would you rather have some broken ribs or be brain Literally dead? die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It's better to break a rib than it is to... Um... Yeah, absolutely. If I, oh. like, if I ever fucking, like, need CPR and the fucking, like, I either get brought back or I have a... And, or I, I get brought back but with a broken rib or I don't get brought back at all, I'll, I'll take the broken rib, bro. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Rims grow back. Um, but yeah, welcome to the discourse. Uh, I don't have okay. a game prepared today. I didn't have. I am disgruntled because I get yelled at every time. No, uh, that's partially true. We wouldn't but, have yelled at you. No, but I like wouldn't. I just haven't. I just didn't have time. I, it's been Even a fucking want... hectic week. It's been a hectic like hectic 2022 for me. To be fair, I've been super fucking swamped with college shit, and it's just been ugh. You know. Um. Yeah. Oh, it's been fucking busy, bro, boys. It's been busy. But uh, we're here to talk about all things Dungeon Select and talk about D&D stuff in general and talk about the characters. Yeah, and we yeah. have some questions that got submitted, so it'll still be a good show. Yo, you can still submit questions now in the chat. Yeah, you can. Um, I, might need Never, someone, I need one of you to read the questions out when we get to that, by the way, because my phone is dead and I obviously can't tab out. Oh, of this. we all know I'm really good at reading because I'm literally... True, true, true. Benefits of having ribs that dislocate. Can you dislocate a rib? Yes. Yeah, you can you dislocate, dislocate any bone. Huh. I just Charles dislocated, an dislocated bone. ribs on dungeons like before. Imagine dislocating like an ear bone. Must be f that shit's fucked. <laughs> Your balance would be gone, mate. <laughs> just go <gaw> gone. <laughs> That's wild. That's uh, it, you know. My connective tissues are stretchy. That's I'm not gonna make that joke. Um sure. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> Welcome to right. like Um we're here to talk about all things Dungeon Select. Last session oh, yeah. was uh, was a good one. You guys did some stuff. I'll, I'll start off with a little <laughs> with a little recap. Um, Y'all talked to Captain Vera Silex to discuss the details of uh, the mission that she offered to Jax, and with that, uh, extended that offer to the party as a whole to accompany her on a journey to retrieve a trident that belongs to a evil sea goddess um also known as the bitch queen and i'm not making that up that is literally one of her official like <laughs> nicknames is uh the bitch queen um you guys made a contract agreed to, to to do this venture with her whenever you guys get back from lake udina um did some shopping the final prep and all that stuff uh um Start listening to forward. the campaign as a podcast at work. I can only imagine the world, world in my head as well. I mean, dude, that's a good fucking like imagination to have. I'm not gonna lie, it's great. That's what I imagine. That's <laughs> most of the time. Um, you guys did some traveling. You uh, also <laughs> on your first leg of travel um, headed to Southwold, which would be the first stop on the way there. And uh, on the road, a mist bank rolled in, and you guys faced an unspeakable horror which is a monster that we'll uh, dive into because the way you prepare those and um, uh, is, uh, is, is fucking cool. And the way you like conceptualize them is, is super dope. Um, and then you, when you got to Southwold, uh, it seems that Jolly, the Tavern Keep, had pissed off some people that decided in, in, to retaliate by burning her tavern down, which you uh, tracked down that group of individuals and took care of them, beat them to a pulp and got them arrested. You guys, that's like the first time you as a group collectively decided to non-lethal something instead of it just being Elazarin being like, oh, we could arrest them. I'm making influences, guys. <laughs> so that was, that was, that was no. cool to see. That was cool to see. Uh, and with that, um, Jolly 
said something she probably shouldn't have said, but heat of the moment, Angie, all that stuff. So we're, I'm curious to see how that's gonna play out and all that stuff. Uh, and I mean, you're just on this like week long journey to get to Lake Odina pretty much. So it's gonna be a lot more traveling in the next like couple of sessions and I'll make sure to make those travel sessions um, interesting and not just have it be you travel, you camp, you travel, yeah, you camp. I love a good travel session, though, when it's, like, weirdly like that, because it's weirdly super immersive, just have, like, fuck all happen. Like, yeah, it's boring sometimes. Yeah, no, there, I, I want, like, like, I want I you guys really to have like that, like, opportunity to do, like, the, you know, have, like, the, the travel talks and all that stuff, but have yeah, some, like, interesting stuff happen to kind of break up your day a little bit, you know what I mean? Like that Unspeakable I, Horror, for instance. Like when we have dumb travel sessions, that's when, yeah. like, some of the best RP comes out, because yeah, you can't just have like, no a lot choice. Of the but inner party RP comes out yeah. is, is during those sessions, yeah. Man, bring back rolling tables for us. <laughs> I want to roll to see what happens on a day. It'd be great. I don't. You roll I... shitty, just, oh, there's yeah, a Tarrasque on the road. Yeah, that's funny. I mean, that's what I do. I have, I have, like, a bunch of rolling tables that I just, like, Hell roll on, yeah. like, the side. Like, oh, this is, this is, there's basically, like, rolling tables that are, like, what kind of, what the type of encounter, and then per mm -hmm. type of encounter, there's, like, rolling tables that are, like, okay, yeah. for that type of encounter, there's these options, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Um... <clears throat> but yeah, it's um, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of traveling, but not boring. I'm gonna make sure that stuff happens and that kind of keeps your attention instead of just like travel stop, travel stop, travel stop. Because that's lame. It's lame. Yeah, it's boring. Um, weirdly fun. <laughs> yeah, like I, I'll I'll definitely keep your you you know the, the moments like the camping and stuff so that you guys can have RP and, and inner party oh, conversations yeah. and talks and shit. But just like on the actual yeah, traveling. You know, I want you guys to, to run into some shit. Like the Unspeakable Horrors, that is something that I wanted to talk about first, because holy fucking shit. Those things are fucking cool. Um, they are from Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, if I'm not yes. mistaken. That's what you said last time, really. And I'm um, fucking terrified you're doing Ravenloft shit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know, I know, like, I don't know, like, loads about Ravenloft, but I know enough where I'm like, fuck that setting. <laughs> fuck Ravenloft. <laughs> like, it's, it's on the shit that's so fucked. <laughs> and with the new, um, there's a new monster guide coming out, right? Like, soon. Yes. Oh, it's already out. Um, which updates a lot of old monsters. I'm fucking terrified when Dutch gets his hand on that. Because yeah. he's gonna like start mixing shit. You're gonna start mixing shit because you like. I know you like sort of uh, homebrewing item, you know, monsters and stuff, especially like more powerful ones, and making them weaker and scaling them. Mm -hmm. so I'm super like. I'm super looking forward to what you come out with. But I'm also fucking terrified because you're gonna be like, oh, here's this thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what have you? If you just find this like abolith somewhere and you're there, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to find the fucking page. There it is. I, I'm Found it. Yeah, so basically the way those monsters work is um, to the certain, to, there, there's rolling tables that basically determine what they look like. Um, first you roll a d4 to determine their body composition. So there is four types. There's aberrant armor, which means that the horror's body is armored in petrified wood, alien crystal, rusted mechanism, sculpted stone, or an exoskeleton. That's there is loathsome limbs. The horror's body boasts spider-like eggs, many jointed appendages, uh, or thrashing tentacles. There's malleable mass. The horror's body is composed of clots of a clot of boneless flesh, shadowy tendrils, or mist. And then there's oozing organs, which is what you guys encountered. Um, the horror's body boasts exposed entrails, bloated parasites, gelatinous shroud, or perhaps perhaps because it's inside out. So that's the, the creature you encountered. Was just like this like horrid monster with its innards on the outside, parasites, like, all, like, covering it. Um, very cool. Then you also roll a d4 to determine what type of hex it has. Uh, hex basically being, um, a, a, a powerful attack that they can do when they have to recharge if you roll a 5 or a 6 on the d6, like that mechanic. Uh, just similar to, like, breath attacks from, like, dragons and stuff like that that have that same mechanic of, like, use that start of their next turn, roll d6. If they roll a 5 or a 6, they get it back that turn. If not, they don't. Um, the first one is Beguiling Hex, which is... Uh, the horror expels a wave of mind-altering magic. Each creature within 30 feet of the horror must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw, taking 6d10 psychic damage and being incapacitated until the end of the creature's next turn on a failed save, or taking half damage on a successful one. There is the Bile Hex, which is the one that you guys had. 60-foot um, line that is 5 foot wide, uh, six, succeed on the deck saving throw. Um, creature covered in bile takes 78 acid damage at the start of its turns. 
at the start of each of its turns until it or another creature uses an action to scrape or wash off the bile that covers it, which is what you guys encountered. So a couple of you got covered in burning acid, and as soon as your turn started, it took a fuckload of damage. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> There's also a petrifying hex, which uh, can save or it expels this, like, 30-foot cone of gas that um, causes necrotic damage and be restrained as it begins to turn to stone. Um, once you're restrained by that, you need to make another saving throw at the end of your next turn, uh, and on a fail, you get petrified. Um, then And then there is the reality-stealing hex, which means that uh, the horror expels a wave of perception-distorting energy, each creature within 30 feet of the horror must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it takes 5 to 8 psychic damage and is deafened until the end of the next turn. If the saving throw fails by 5 or more, the target is also blinded until the end of the next turn. Holy fuck. Um, so you guys had the bile hex, which I thought was fitting because it fit well with the whole, like, innards on the outside, uh, acid, fucking just like... <laughs> I don't know, I, fe I felt like that fit really well. You then also roll for what kind of limbs it has. There's a bone blade, which means that um, it deals slashing damage instead of uh, bludgeoning damage. And in addition, it also crits on a 19. Cool. And when it crits, it rolls the damage die three times instead of, instead of twice. There is Why? the corrosive pseudopod, which means that the limb attack just deal an extra 2d8 acid damage, which is what you guys had. There's the grasping tentacle, which uh, just means that if you get hit by a melee attack by the thing, you're also grappled. Uh, and there is the poisonous limb, where uh, the limb deals piercing damage instead of bludgeoning damage. And then when you get hit by the limb, you must hit on a con save or take poison damage and be poisoned until the end of its God, next imagine turn. Imagine if it just grappled you and then just shot its bow just in your face when you're point mm. blank. So, it's like, fucking... there is a bunch of, like, varieties. And with that, you can, you can have a lot of different varieties mm. of this monster. It's super fucking cool. Um, some things that it also does is... Um, if your body type is the bile body, is the oozing organ body, which you guys have, it also means that if you hit it with a melee attack, you take 1d10 acid damage just from hitting it. Yeah. Um, it if it's the malleable mass body, it, it gets a perk that is called amorphous, which means that uh, the horror can move through any opening of at least one inch wide without squeezing. So it can just like squeeze itself through anything. It also gets uh, something called re relentless stride if it has the loathsome limbs body. Which means that uh, the horror can can move through the space of another creature. The first time on the turn that the horror enters a creature's space during this move, the creature must succeed on a strength saving throw or be knocked prone. Uh, and if it has the aberrant armor, it has an AC of 17 instead of 15, which normally the rest of the ver versions have. <laughs> really cool fucking creature. That's pretty Super fucking cool. Dirt. Terrifying. Terrifying. Can't face like a multiple of them at one point because it's going to be on a high level. Yeah, they're, so, they're yeah. challenging eight. Which is yeah. basically double what you guys are, should be facing. That's why I was like, there is six of you plus you have Sirin. So if I put one of like one of them against you, it'll hit hard. But there's enough of you to make it so that you can easily beat it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it'll fucking do a lot of damage. But because there's so many of you, it, it, I felt like it was pretty balanced at the end of the day. I think it doesn't help. Like with my subclass, you have to almost pump in more a little bit because obviously you have I can, do like yeah, I you have guys just have like a d10 I heal extra hp at every fucking turn pretty much if you're you know what yeah. i mean yeah like you you know I, we are more tanky because yeah no i definitely whenever i create encounters i definitely, I definitely and... keep your dome in mind because i'm like they're just gonna have more hp than they should have and it's gonna yeah. replenish every like they get a free heal at that with that way as well so like i definitely make encounters a little harder than i normally would purely because you're yeah. just a little more tanky because of the fact that that dome is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> like, when I first saw it, I was like, that's not... I was like, that's kind of... That's pretty cool. It's not, like, too, too bad. And then, like, when I, like... F now I, like, understand a lot more, I'm like, that's thing. This thing's fucking ridiculous. Honestly, yeah, it's <laughs> that, so stupid. coupled with, like, Barbarian. Barbarian, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mike, like, it's so disgusting. We also Until have, like... Until we get, like, poison boys. and acid damage. And then I'm there with, like, Brooks three quarters of his face melting off. Yeah, but don't you at some hit. point? Because wait, what is your plan? Your plan is to be more barb than monk, right? No, no, no. no. Oh, it's the other way around. Mm. Pretty sure monks get like a poison resist at some point, right? Or like a. Yeah, and don't barbarians also get a thing where they just are 
resistant to a lot more types of damage besides Only, just no, that's take only totem subclass totem. and choose totem. Uh, um, better totem. Never mind yeah, better. But the only problem I have with that is that like it's one I feel like I'm really struggling subclass wise because none of them fit thematically for Brooks. Mm -hmm. Apart from Frenzy. And uh, as a three level dip I mean Frenzy's a bad subclass anyway. But at a three level dip, all Frenzy gives is um you can attack on your bonus action, which I can already do as a mom. Yeah, true. So I get to the point of like, I'm just gonna pick a different one. What's gonna give me the best like three level dip, and then I'm just gonna reflavor it. I mean, totem probably probably one of yeah. the best ones for it. If if uh, not yeah. totem, fucking um, zealot would be so, fucking good. Yeah. And I think with the unspeakable horror being like a monster that is something yeah. that normally doesn't really appear on the material plane i was like you're on the new continent nobody fucking knows what lives here so it gives me an excuse to not really have to explain why mm. these weird off outlandish creatures are here because you don't know whether that's normal or not mm. maybe they just you know maybe that's just a thing on this continent and also yeah, it also it's me, can... which gives me a little more like creative freedom to kind of just like yeah. pick whatever creatures i want you guys to face because i think they're cool and i want you guys to face and not have but... to want and not have to wait for yeah. you guys to travel to a yeah. plane that fits that also you know I mean? like but with the tie-ins that you have made with other creatures and and the like you know like we have this sort of vecna tie-in that's like with canon and world and you know there's other like sort of dnd things it makes sense that there'll be some weird shit going on in this island as well yeah. like you've you've made some tie-ins where like hey the planes are and like also the planes have always been fucked like yeah. how much how much shit we had in like the previous campaign where it was like Yo, the plane gates are kind of quite close together at the moment. Like, you know, yeah, no, kind of like an, th th you haven't been yeah. to Planarion, yeah, which is like in my yeah. world. I basically yeah. made it that like when uh, Kelvalar, the like yeah. father of the gods, essentially yeah. created the Prime Material Plane, he first mm. created Planarion mm. as like a foothold. Like that mm. was where he stood, essentially. Mm opening gates to all kinds of different planes and just plucking things from those planes and dropping them on this plane that he's making in his mm -hmm. image. So there's this continent with just planar gates to all kinds of mm -hmm. fucking realms, both good and bad. Um, you know, sometimes shit escapes. You know, yeah. sometimes shit breaks through. Like, there's like forces dedicated to protecting the plane on Planarion from invaders, but like... Hey man, sometimes man, things something like, slips through the had cracks, like, dude, you know? Kramaras had like a big like thing with that, right? He was very like planar. That was a thing that came up. Who? Chromatis is very like planar sort of protecting. Yeah. That's where like, um, uh, my Paladin subclass came in from the cool was the Watcher and that was all about protecting the planes. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. It was very, very like, man, I'm just... God, so it's just cool. And like Kevin. with the story arc, like I already... Yeah, right now we're still in the baby baby phase of the campaign, right? So you guys are just doing mercenary stuff. I'm, I'm implementing some of your backstories in there to kind of keep you guys involved. But I've already I already have like an idea of like what I want the overarching like long term plotline to be, and it's no secret that it's very elemental based because this whole thing about this continent is that like there's these elemental lords that are all like you know there's Kosuf, there's Estesia, there is uh fucking uh you know b with bell mm. being an Ergnasi. i you know there's there's air elementals too and mm. the whole thing about uh this continent about agrant is that for eons it, it it has been there but was shrouded by this like tropical mm. storm and suddenly that storm has disappeared and nobody really knows why or how, and obviously that's going to come up at some point, which is also elemental in nature. And mm -hmm. so this is definitely, I have an idea of, of kind of like involving all the different elements and elemental planes into this like larger than life fucking storyline that I, we're already kind of, we already kind of begun. Because we have it introduced to Kosuth, and you're, you know, you're about to finish, like, the first part of Kosuth's, like, whole plan, I guess, with uh, Davian finding the tears. Obviously, there's a link to the plane of air, because there's Kess. Um, you're, uh, you're about to encounter the Mac Daddy of the elemental plane of water. Um, so, like, that, that plot line is in motion. But it's such a slow burn, and it's just mm. gonna be like sprinkled throughout, like, oh, 
And I, it's, it's, I'm excited. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be very good. <laughs> it's gonna be very good. <laughs> um, do you guys have any? Do you two any anything you want to talk about or any questions about anything that happened in recent times or just in general? I. There's so many things that have happened in this like past couple of weeks. In like, fuck, man. Uh, like just in last week. Kess just out of nowhere is like, hey, will you help me make a statue? And that's like, okay, cool. Um, we met a tailor who might be my new favorite NPC. <laughs> oh, yeah, what's, her name? what's her fucking name? Emma? Emma. Yeah. Emma. Do, 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 writing him. Writing him. I forget, I forget what it is. Yeah, I've got it written. Fucking. Dude, with the six fingers Emma on one Taylor. hand. Emma Yes. <laughs> Man, the things she could do to Brooks with those six fingers. <laughs> Dude, like, that's her whole thing is, like, because I have six fingers on one hand, I can make extra, like, precise, like, movements with my needles and whatever. That's kind of, like, the that's kind of the, the, the shtick there. Well, that's the shtick, but is it real yeah. or is it marketing bullshit? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so her clothing has been good. So, like, I don't yeah. know. Um, we had the whole fucking, like... Oh, by the way, Jack sold the dragon... <laughs> uh, we have such fucking, a power move. I love it. We we have like at this point been like we're being headhunted for jobs to go and essentially steal from one of the most terrifying water-based deities. Yeah, like I mean, you know me. You know that I love a good like larger than life against all odds fucking story arc, and I'm just like, dude. She, she's not a god by any means, right? She's just a very powerful being. She's not like a, you're not a, you know, you're not facing a fucking Orcus or a Tiamat, right? But As she's Jack definitely, would say, is there a difference? Well, yes. But like, it, it's, um, I don't know, man. I just like giving you, like, even, like I don't want to make any plot arc seem insignificant, which is why I tend to go for like, even the smaller, like, side hustles will have some like big implications um a, a video game that does that really well for instance is the witcher the witcher 3 it has a bunch of side quests that you don't have to do but every side quest feels significant in a way and is unique from one another and um that's kind of what i try like even though it's nothing to do with the main storyline it's nothing to do with any of your backstories really besides that the fact that like jack's you know oh shipwreck is caused by those druids so it's a little tied to Jax's backstory, but like, I want every quest line you do to feel significant uh, and and feel like make an impact, I guess. Um, which is why I tend to go for these like very big, like scary looking, well known canon five E creatures, mm. just to give you guys as players a bit of an idea of like, oh shit, this is like, oh, this is not just we're not just fighting Bandit Captain Number Fifteen. Oh, we're not gonna go into Goblin Camp number four of the campaign. You know what I mean? I've never really been a fan of that sort of thing. You know how not most campaigns are like, four. oh, for the first act, we're gonna kill giant rats in a suit. No, fuck that shit. First act, last campaign, I made you guys fight fucking mind flayers. Because mm. fuck it. Why not? You know what I mean? And that's just kind of the way I like to do things. And it's, it's, it's scary, or it seems scary, but like. I am still waiting for the time. Where you get something that's supposed to be like really small, insignificant things that like means to be from like fucking easy, and you're like, oh, by the way, I buffed this. Like, oh no. <laughs> you walk into the tavern, you see four large rats, and we just look, ha, free money, and then the rats just like get up and start walking. Yeah, they're all like, like, they're all like fucking like just like master splinter. These rats on the floor like, just look at us and they're like, like of monk yeah. rats, rats that yeah. just fuck they, shit up. And then like as they <laughs> die, you into we the think, wrong basement, motherfucker. <laughs> we, th we think they're dead, and you just see them like form together to make like one big no, rat. That's when like oh, these four like no. these four these, these four turtles show up and are just like, <laughs> you killed her dad. Like, Master? I'm, I'm fucking... literally waiting for the fucking, like, switcheroo of instead of a weakened big thing, it's like, hey, fuck you. Yeah, it's like that joke. Would you rather fight, like, what, one, was it one giant, uh... A horse-sized duck or... That one. Yeah. Yeah. Duck -sized horse. Yo, would you rather fight a hundred ducks Shut or... Up. I don't want to talk about anything Quackinator. <laughs> we, 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 like, we find, like, 
we find like one goblin at the side of the road and we're like, oh, easy pickings, and he pulls out a fucking Glock. <laughs> <laughs> it's a machine gun. <laughs> okay, easy pickings, and he just like pulls out the fucking wand of workers and it's like, yeah, dude, yeah, bro. <laughs> easy pickings, just an art deficit. And he's got like a fucking cart and horse like we've got. Just pulls a Gatling out. <laughs> just a literal minigun, just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Yeah, no, I no, I'm just like, I'm just a slut for um, making things <laughs> big and um, very, uh, terrifying maybe, but like very, just very ambitious, I guess. Dramatic. Dramatic. Yeah, I don't know. I just, this is the way I like to write things, man. Like, I hate that, like, I feel, uh, same in video games, where like, mm -hmm. you're level one, what am I going to fight? Oh, I'll fight some rats, oh, I'll fight some goblins, oh, I'll fight like the occasional bandits, like, eh, it's, it's, it's been done. Why? I can just nerf CR15 creatures to the point yeah. where they're balanced to fight against them and have them shit themselves a little bit before they enter the fight. Cause why not? Why fight the wolves in Goldshire when you can go straight to Haga? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that's a fucking. Uh, Losers. Back, Losers. Back in there. Back, back in, in there. On classic when Haga was actually like fucking unkillable. Mm. So yeah, I don't know. That's just kind of the way I like to. That's just the way I like to write. I don't know, man. I just like. I just want to make things seem epic all the time, and every storyline that I introduce has significance and is connected to 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 something larger at hand. And maybe that something larger at hand isn't something that comes up this campaign, but might come up in future. Like there are some things that you've done in campaign one that. Uh, haven't really fully been concluded, but will definitely come up this campaign. I can. I've already been in talks and been in writing. Some campaign one like unfinished plot hooks are coming into campaign two to to basically for the sake of um, continuity. Oh, because p party one didn't fully deal with that. They're still around. You know what I mean? Like, th that, that. I want the world to constantly evolve as well, and, um... Same with this. Like, say you go after, you know... Uh, depending on how you deal with Estisha, for instance, can have big implications, not only for this campaign, but also for, like, pff, next? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's... I want the yeah. world to be moving and be alive, even in places where the party isn't at. You know what I mean? Like. Off screen, things also happen. Things you do leave an impact. If you go to a city and only go there once, but did something significant in a city, that city is going to evolve based on that. And you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so then if you do visit them in campaign three, there'll be traces of that. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, sorry, I got put on a tangent. Planning there. a third campaign, twenty-one episodes into the second. Well, I'm not planning a third campaign, but I'm sure, <laughs> like, if... I, I feel like it's more likely to happen than not, right? So <laughs> we, we have sat, like, a, a tree with Sweet with Plants in Campaign 2, and it's just, like, writing this down, like, Campaign 3. That tree's gonna fuck people up. Druids. <laughs> <laughs> you just look at you just look at a just note page it just says druids. <laughs> and you're like all cats. Does that even mean? Yeah. <laughs> Underlying three times? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Circle of the go fuck yourself. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, uh, I don't know. Sorry, I, don't know. I, I completely th went off the sorry. rails there. I asked you guys if you had any questions. How dare you talk about stuff. the show in sorry. the show about the no, show? It's just like I asked yeah. you guys if you guys had anything you wanted to talk about, and then I completely went off uh, off on one, so sorry. Uh, what other dumb shit is happening? I mean, fucking, so something that like, I've semi wondered mm. is with Valor showing up. Yes. Was that always intended to be happening kind of soon when like Elasmin was alone at some point or was it you saw an opportunity and you went cool this is now this is um, something I could do I wanted to continue that plot line um, yep. because like last time that came up was when that like guard on the way to uh, fucking street them right yep. I was like I wanna I wanna keep that thread warm I don't want that yeah. to like die down and then suddenly come back 20 sessions from now. So I want to constantly basically Just put reminders in the game yeah. that, hey, that, that is still something that's happening. Mm. And then 
Um, I had plan. I have. I have. I had things planned for Valor, and he was gonna mm. meet up with you at some point. Mm. And then you were alone, and I was like, "Dude, this is as good an opportunity as any. Why not just now? Yeah. Why not? Why not just do it now?" Yeah. So I kind of like I ha I knew that it I wanted that to happen. And when I saw you going off on your own, I was like, "Okay, fuck it. Spur the moments. This is happening now because this is as good an opportunity as any." Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, that, that's like that's what I kind of like semi thought was like this is something you wanted. He wanted planned, and I've just gone la la la. Because <laughs> I was you like, <clears throat> uh, "Man, I'm sh fucking fine." Because I character. basically the way I've 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 like taken Valor because Valor was a character that you made. Yep. But um, from your backstory that you gave me, it seemed that even though he's a part of that group, due to his, you know, him being your mentor, um, there he cares more for you than he does for that group, and yeah, that's why he sent you that warning, like, hey, mm. they're looking for you. Um, so basically, the way I've kind of taken Valor is like he's now basically your man on the inside, yeah, essentially. Feeding information when he can, looking out for you when he can, and uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, in my head, Valor is probably the person that I can trust the most in this world, mm -hmm. even, mm -hmm. like, above his own family. Like, Valor is someone, like, despite everything of, like, him introducing him to this place in the, you know, in the first, you know, this group in the first place, mm -hmm. despite all, he is the person that, no matter, the, like, if Valor said to Elazen the grass was purple and the sky was green he'd be like sure like <laughs> it's that kind of like he trusts this person fully mm -hmm. and, and that's like gonna come around to bite yeah, of course that's the whole Imagine reason why I've made people it's D &D. why i've almost made that decision because i knew <clears throat> it'd be it's a good it's a good like laundry point of like hey you you can't fully trust anyone like you know what everyone's no, dealing with and same, like, same with like Elazar. like i don't want anyone to fully trust Elazar because obviously he's a shady motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, no, and the thing with that, like, your backstory in particular is, like, everyone's uh, backstory is very much, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, Jack's shipwrecked, and now you're kind of dealing with that, and there's some more about Jack's backstory that hasn't come up yet, per se, but and there is some shit there, but, like, everybody has, like, several plot points, essentially, to their backstory, and I'm just kind of, like, cherry-picking which one I want to introduce when. Um, and uh, there's some that are very obvious, like Digons, for instance, that's like, I'm looking for this place. Hey, have y'all seen this place where there's a, a, a rock and a thing and a, a that and a cave and whatever? That's very on the nose and something that Digon is actively looking for and has mentioned several times. Then there is Kess, who's like, oh, don't know my dad. Oh, whoops, I know my dad now, lol dab. Um, mm. And, you know, the implications that that may have. Uh, you know, Davian, obviously, there is some shit there that he that hasn't come up yet, per se, but the first obvious thing is like, He's had these visions of fire and volcanoes, and that led to this whole Kosuth thing, and... Um, the reason I'm doing this early is because he wants to dip into Warlock, um, and this is just basically our way of kind of giving him an option uh, sooner in the campaign rather than later. Uh, and then there's stuff like like yours, Koiba, where it's like... This is a story arc, and I can do so much fucking cool shit with this, but it's such a slow burn. But in order for that, like, I want that plot to always be in the back of not only your mind, but in everyone's mind. Like, oh, Spiderweb Gang. They're ex they exist. And I, that's why I feel like I need every, like, five to ten sessions or so, I need to at least have, like, a couple times where something regarding that group came up, so that it's always it's always there. Somewhere in your head, like, oh, they're around. You know what I mean? Even so that's just, why... like, random guy in Tavern has tattooed. Yeah, it could be small things. Like that guard. At the, on the road, it's like, oh yes. Yeah, I can't wait for us to see the symbol on like a building or something. And be like, nope, we're going to a different town. Yeah, or, or like you know, Valor feeding the information like, hey, uh, last time you were sighted by them was in New Dynamith. Oh, guess where you're headed on the way to, you know what I mean? So I like, I want, I want, I want that fear, that. <laughs> not necessarily fear, but I want there to always be a lingering threat of like that spider web gang is out there, and they're looking for me, and by me, it's now us because they know that I travel with these people. And I just like want to make sure that I keep that story or, or that, yeah. that like that like plot line, even if it's by doing very small things like oh mentioning that you see someone with a tattoo. Yeah. It could be very minor, but that way I keep that plot hook yeah. somewhere I, um, in the back of your head at all times, and that's that's my goal. So that I, when it suddenly does like reach 
the point where you are going to deal with it. It's not like out of the blue. Oh, yeah. fuck yeah, I forgot about that. No, it's always been yeah. lingering and festering, I mean, like, kind of. Ethan can attest as well. Like, one of my favorite things to do in D&D backstories is create <clears throat> big groups that you can do a lot with that have these the world implications, you know, like... It's the same with fucking Cyrus, right? And the campaign yeah, Cy that, uh, Cyrus with that yeah. cult. I, I, gave him, I gave him a cult that was like, Cyrus may... You know, it's a similar story, but completely different, like, tangent mm -hmm. of... Cyrus was a high-ranking member in this, and it was kind of his, you know... Or so he thought. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so he was told last Last, it was known. Yeah. Um, um, by, like, creating something that can, I mean, have little impact on the character itself, if, choose being it's just something that's there, and it's like, okay, cool, you can do it, and then you can, like, bring different elements in, or it's something that's a big background of, like, Hey, this directly fucking affects you now, and like you now have to live up to it. Like it's, it's just, I don't know, it's one of my favorite sort of storytelling things. And like, I never mean to like do it. And I look, I'm like, fuck, I'm like, I've done it again. Yeah, <laughs> Did the thing. But that matches, that fits my yeah. way of story writing really well. Yeah, because it that that is exactly what I look for. Is like this like big, uh, over overly epic, um, ambitious, world threatening thing. And that's the way I like to write. So, like, like, fucking. There is something that none of you know about. Hmm. But, like, in yeah. campaign one, I canonized Strahd. He exists yes, in our did. world. Yes. And. Man, if he yeah. won't. He, if he. Due to some shit that has happened that you guys are not aware of, if he don't show up this campaign, I'd be very surprised. <laughs> yeah. I was. We had that Strad there. And there was legitimately a well, moment. There was references to Strad. No, we, one, right? we we had a, we found a, a tapestry of him, right? Or yes, right? or painting. Yeah, you thought uh, vampires, uh, vampires, yeah, um, and some like uh, I forget exactly because it's yeah, it was pretty yeah, like it was semi. With Iron Deck it was like halfway through yeah. the campaign or some shit. Yeah. Um, and uh, that was basically like they were servants of Strahd on yeah. this plane. Yeah, I mean, like, we've also we've also brought it up. Like we brought it up a couple of times, and we said like when we had downtime, we always said this one was like, do we deal with the Strahd thing? Like we've heard about it and it heard it's been terrorizing people in this far off land. Do we just go? And we're like, nah, fuck it. Like we've got. You know, we always had a bigger fish to fry, shit to do. or like at least in our personal that was my life. Goal, with, that's, with stuff. showing Strahd we in campaign. Very much. My, my goal was. Been, like, Never for you guys to deal with Strahd in campaign one. Yeah. But I wanted him to be canon and I wanted him to let that to not I to, like you know, I like how there. you put in <clears throat> these very iconic from the past D D, you know, lore mm -hmm. into our campaign. And even if they only play like a minor role of just being like, yeah, they exist, or if it's then gonna lead into a more, you know, this is the the fate I it's nice to kind of like have that like so yeah, much like okay it's I, quite interesting. and also i can't wait to see like what your turn on this stuff is going to be as well because like you know we see what you can do with fucking homebrew shit that you put out your ass you know what i mean like <laughs> imagine now you've got like a whole bunch of fucking pre-written law that you can now do what you want with yeah like the thing with because camping one obviously like orcus iconic yeah. Can yeah. canon D, D character and has yeah. been for many editions um I I feel like I took the story that was there written by Wizards of the Coast and I was like I gave it my spin and I was like okay um but like I obviously I write bad guys myself but on a more smaller scale um fucking uh you know uh just to name a few uh fucking Fear Krog for instance or or yeah. or um granted Malek well Malek was thought thought up by Vincent, as in like, oh, there's a shadow demon, but like, and it, his, you know, the whole like Malek, like his being and what his motivations are, that was all me, pretty much. No, it was just like Ambien. Can't remember his fucking name from. Oh, Campion fucking Zodin, dude! Yo, big up Zodin. Zodin. He's just, he's just an Zodin, old he Great, <laughs> yeah, he is. He was a great, like, almost not anti-hero, but like villain. But he wasn't really much a villain. He wasn't like not like the big, but like the. He was the a villain. Mini so boss. Yeah. He was a great yeah. mini boss. Yeah. And even then, he wasn't like a mini boss because the dealings with him, like, no, as it was a just you dealt with people body. that he made bar made bargains with. You never yeah. dealt with him directly. Personally. And then when we did deal with him directly, we made a deal fucking with him. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. We're like, 
fuck the middle man. Let's go straight to the head honcho. Like, Can't yeah. wait for uh, him to rear his ugly head. Hmm? Yeah. Can't wait Can't for him to that. rear his ugly head. Campaign oh, he's three. gonna. Don't worry. <laughs> he's gonna. Don't uh, worry. There's um, so much shit from campaign one that, like, I love that you know, shit like too. even like characters. Like, you think realistically, Morwin's alive. Hmm? You know, unless something horrible happened. Never. You know, Nicole. It's Old only man. thirty years, probably alive. I can. Okay. Sixty-five. You'd be like I once. I'll give you some insight in Nicole. Also, because it's your character, Quaybum. Oh yeah. Um, there is the whole thing with Nicole is he is guildmaster of the Heroes of Exile. Yep. He is the one that made um, Peter Riz the leader of the Calzer Adventurers because Nicole's experience with him worked with him for years. And when this Agrand thing happened, he was like, okay. I want there to be a sub-faction of our guild on this new continent. I can't take care of that. And he went to Peter Riz and was like, listen, we go way back. I trust you. You know the way I run things. I want you to do yeah. that for me. Um, so there's Nicole influence in 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 uh, Eldilon with the, the Calzir Adventures being there. And, and Peter Riz being in charge is something that Nicole decided, essentially. Uh, Hell yeah, what a boy, <laughs> my man. Hey man, so like, I, when, it, when it came up, like, you know, when the Guildmaster's decision sort of came up, I was like, that makes sense, Nicole. That was also me kind of fully kind of giving you Nicole as a character as well. Like, I was like, you can do whatever, like, even if it comes back, he gets, like, usurped as Guildmaster, he, he doesn't have to run shit, right? Or if you, he now creates his legacy, like, that's all you. You can do whatever the fuck you want with him at this point, like. Yeah, I want to, you know, obviously, Nicole's a character that you spent fucking like two and a half After, years yeah. Yeah. creating and, and constantly. Did Ethan freeze or is he just sitting very still? Very sitting very still. I'm Man, very you still. were sitting so still that I thought you can froze. <laughs> I'll be honest, like I'm listening and I'm paying attention, but like Yeah, yeah. No, how do I describe it? Like I don't want to say I'm zoned out because like I'm like I'm just hyper focused. Home. Not even. Like I'm hyper focused <laughs> on listening. Yeah, no, right? I, I forgot you. that I need to move and like speak yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh yeah. and like um obviously I don't want to of course. Uh, make it seem that I'm undoing two and a half years worth of character building. Um, but I felt like, you know, with Nicole becoming Guildmaster, I was like, okay. Uh, Peter Riz is a character that a, a lot of you guys enjoyed. And I was like, I want to, you know, he's going to be old, but like, he's a badass, you know. Uh, he's worked closely with the Heroes of Exile, um, you know, being the, you know, their like guard captain, essentially, of, of, their, of their keep or of their guild hall. Um, um, when this new land came up, obviously, it makes sense for Nicole to be like, hey, Heroes of Exile is here, is Kalzir, but would kind of want, not necessarily a Heroes of Exile guild part two, but I do want there to be some kind of, like, sub-faction, where basically, I, I wouldn't want to say the B-team, no. but, but Nicole definitely went on like a hiring speed of like, okay, uh, looking for adventurers, mercenaries that want to make this trip to the new land and form a, um, a, a sub-faction led by uh, Peter Riz. And like Bran, for instance. Bran, Bran I feel, is I feel like... immortal. Yeah, like Bran, Bran's still... I was gonna say alive, but like mm, he's vibing in in Bran the still fucking exists. Shadowfell with the Raven Queen, being her like, you know, spoiler alert, but he is her champion now, like proper. Which means what the fuck happened? Like, so if we if, see if we see Bran in campaign two, we're fucked. Shit, it's fucked. No, like yes. if like, if at some if somehow some way, the party ends up dealing with some Raven Queen related shit, there's a good likelihood that Bran might show up. Which just terrifies like, hey. me. You know, and he'll be played by me, I guess. But, like, it'll be... He'll definitely, to his core, still be the same character. But, like, he's seen some shit, man. Well, yeah, it's 30 years. <laughs> like, it's the difference between, like, currently dealing with the new way his life is. Like, has been this way for maybe Or maybe, six maybe what I'll do is, like... I'll versus was, 30 like, years later. Maybe what I'll do is, like... If that time would ever come for any of the old characters to show up or make an appearance, I'll basically hit that person up that plays him and like, listen, your character's coming up from campaign one. 
this is the shit they've seen. This is how I feel like they would have evolved. Put your own creative twist on that, and I need you to roleplay that out, but within like the certain like within the certain frame of of uh, that I give you. So like, there will be a little less creative freedom for you guys to roleplay those characters of your own, because you know, hippity hoppity, they're not my property to do with what I want. But like, <laughs> uh, like for instance, if if Brand shows up, I'll be like, hey, listen, Ethan, it's been thirty years. Bran has been serving. The Raven Queen and Doesn't has seen has cool seen X Y Z has gone through A B C. Uh, this is how he looks now. Have fun. Would what Brand I want, to, what I want you to do with Bran is eventually motivate the party to do this certain thing. Good luck getting to do that and do that the way you see fit. Boom, and that's what I will give you, for instance, or Nicole or anything. I love the idea, but I also like I hate the idea of having to be like. So this is my idea. Well, that's a fucking shit idea. Go fuck yourself. I don't necessarily I mean, approve of that. Yeah, I mean, here. you know, obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll see when the time comes, but, like, I, I, I'm I, a sucker for references. I love it when... Reference comedy is funny. I love it when certain movies make references to, like, uh, you know, sir, fucking, oh, in The Hobbit, they mention a thing that first got revealed to the viewer in Lord of the Rings, or mm. got talked about, and like, oh, that's that thing! I know it's that, the I thing. The other thing. Lit. Yeah, I love that sort of thing. It, it makes you the best part of reference, <laughs> right? like referencing other materials. It makes you feel like you're in on like an in joke. Yeah, it, exactly. It gives you um, that sense of like, oh, in campaign too, I know that. Critical Role, for instance, when they were reading a book written by fucking uh, Terry Darrington, I was like, "Pog yeah. you." That's a reference I understand. Lit. That sort of thing, and I kind of, I, I, plus continuity. It means that that even the though that campaign is over, out. it's still, you know, it's they're still they're still around, they're still doing things, or they have done things that impacted the world even after the campaign. I I yeah, that's just I love I love that shit. I'm a slut for that shit, dude. And I can't wait to really like Man, I have ideas, man. I have so many fucking ideas and I just don't have the, the room to implement them all, and it makes me sad. Oh, damn, you, know? you have ideas. <laughs> Like, dude, I you have no clue what I've been preparing, bro. Like, <laughs> fuck. Uh, I've. Do you know what? I feel like. Okay, is there any character that wouldn't have? I feel like every character would like, even if they're old, would have lived their year. From campaign one. Like who? Sorry. Well, ask I feel like, so I feel like every character would still be alive from campaign one. They might be old as shit. But, <laughs> um, you know, like, think. Morwen's probably fine. Morwen is fine. Bran, I don't, feel, I don't Bran know if is... Bran ages. So. He doesn't. So there you go, then. It basically, it's up to the Raven Queen to decide whenever Bran's time has come. That's Which I'm sure she has, like, some fancy plan for. It's not just, like, arbitrarily, like, yeah, I'm done with you. No, it's like, you know, she has a plan for Bran, and until that plan is fulfilled, he is alive. And after that, she'll basically be like, hey, Bran. I have no longer. I you've deserved your re, your your like rest or whatever. Um, but if Bran is like, oh, how about you just cut like the you cut that little tendril that makes me your slave, and I just die whenever I die, thoughts or something. You know what I mean? Like yeah. whatever. Um, yeah, trim trim is probably fine. Um, Cassandra probably has multiple kids at this point, maybe. Who knows? Maybe have grandkids at this point. Maybe have grandkids at this point. I had, yeah. Really yeah, well, I mean, me. how old was Kisaren's daughter? She was like a teenager. She was a teenager. 14. So she's in her 40s now. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so Kisaren's like Grandma Kisaren. Back in <laughs> my possible. day, I used to um, kill men for less. <laughs> who else is there? Who else is there? Who else is there? Gen is, is vibing real. in the Feywild, just chilling. Yeah, Gen's, he's, he's chilling. Straight vibing. He's old. The halflings don't get I can't as wait old as to be either. like. Oh, do halflings get a little older than humans or a little younger? I forget. Might be a little yeah. older. Uh, ch oh, changelings, I mean. Talking about halflings, changelings. Changelings are a little younger, I think. Is younger? But if he's in the Feywild. Time goes that, differently. Wonky, wonky, timey, wonky. 30 years here would be like. Six years, maybe, in the first Yeah, Gen, Gen will be older, but probably still kicking. Uh, yeah, I think everybody. Uh, Atanas, also, definitely, yeah. unless she got... Uh, if anyone died, I feel like it would be Atanas doing some dumb shit. Yeah, we all agree? True. I mean, or just Atanas being <laughs> born, she's just like, I'm fucking enough now. I'm just gonna go wandering, and then just <laughs> dies, just from, like... 
<laughs> Nicole Fuck strikes it. me as the character that would be like, I can Ooh, tell yeah. my time is coming. Yeah. I'm just gonna go for a wander into the mountains in fucking yeah. Thermogar one more or one more time. I mean, yeah. Like freeze and to I'm death just gonna, on the side I'm just gonna of the sit down in the snow and just fucking die. You know what Straight what I mean? up, Nicole. I mean, Nicole, <laughs> like a house cat. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. just like Nicole's. You know, beyond death as time comes and as time comes. That's why he <laughs> fucking died too many times. Because he was like, fuck, I guess I'm dead. And oh, no, no, I'm not. Guess who's back? Like, when he got fucking. Oh, that is true. Fucking Octanus and Trim left to go rebuild. Fucking. Yeah. So. Yeah. Octanus has trimmed the babysitter. So I guess. Yeah, I true. guess she'll be okay then. Nicole, sure. Nicole will be the one. I mean, Nicole's. <laughs> we reckon Octanus will be mellow with age. Absolutely. I think so. Or not. Or, 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 or go the other crazy way. Fucking. Yeah. Yeah. You go into this town and there's grandma. just this Whoa! one, like. Like fifty odd year old woman with a with like a giant axe. Like... I imagine you know because at some point, right? Actanus' her parents will have will have died. You know, oh, so she Actanus kind of taking up like a like a like a like a like a godmother role for for Johnny or some shit, and like, you know what but I mean. Even Johnny, like Johnny's like thir mid thirties now. Yeah, but like you know, throughout Johnny the thirty year, kids. Th throughout the thirty year, like like yeah. uh, time. I can't. Do you know what? I can't wait. We're gonna find like a random NPC in the new like continent Jonathan. who like like named Jonathan who like works as like a bat keeper or something. No, he's like a carpenter somewhere. He like does nothing yeah. significant. He's like yeah. You know, we like <laughs> we just find a carpenter on the new continent who and we're just like maybe carpenter. You say? <laughs> <laughs> oh right, because of the fucking yeah. My, okay, <laughs> maybe that's why carpenter was on the brain uh, because of that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like obviously, Johnny, you know, he's out there. He's he's chilling. He's 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 chilling. He's he's in his thirties. He'll probably have like you know, wife or husband. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I don't oh, know. Uh, Yo, uh, yeah. they may have it. Johnny may have maybe adopted kids and stuff. <gasps> yeah, maybe. He continues the cycle. I don't know, man. Uh, but yeah, like, dude, is there one? <clears throat> I, there's so many things that I want to talk about because I'm excited about I them, know, but I just I, I, I just can't. You know? Yo, instead, should we yeah. like answer some questions from the disc? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we yes. have. Let's. Uh, uh, b -b 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 we have. A oh god, Bell added some since the start. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's so... one for me, then one for Koiba, then one for me, then one for Koiba. Exactly, so Should we read for each other? Yeah, of course. Oh my god, Jesus. Aww. What Cute. odds did Brooks think he had of winning the fight against Dyke in the scrapyard, and how does he feel about winning? Okay, so the difference between what odds did Brooks think he had and what did I think he had are like two different answers. Okay. Um, I thought it was. A fairly tough but winnable fight, given you know, like meta knowledge and grapples. Brooks, I mean, Brooks. Brooks is an egotistical asshole who was like, "Fuck yeah, I can. I need to be smart about it because I'm tired." But at the end of the day, like, I'm me. Brooks was like, "Absolutely," and if I don't, then it's just down to the fact that I wasn't properly rested. I'm. Um, even when he loses, like, he's a dickhead. I hate him. Yeah, absolutely. I fucking hate him, dude. Um, like, the whole, like, <laughs> getting the shit beat out of him in round two. There were so many times where I nearly, I was like, I'm gonna have to. Like, I think I used one key point in that second fight. Maybe, and yeah. I was like, I'm gonna have to, because I need to not go down. I need to finish this. But, <sighs> Brooks is a charlatan, right? That's who he is. And we've seen it in a lot of ways. But that also comes across in the way that he fights. And he went in with this knowledge of, okay, in a straight fist fight, at the moment, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. So how do I give myself the best odds? How do I set myself up for that? I've got a good tactic. I'm not going to use that tactical fight because I don't want Dagon to, like, you know, start playing, like, hit and run, knowing that he's going to try and grapple her. Because she's faster than him. She can run away if she wants to. Yeah, fucking 300 plus feet movement or some shit. Yeah, so he was like, look, <clears throat> I'm just gonna have to tank that stuff out and then grapple it. And in his mind, of course, that's a flawproof plan. It's never gonna go wrong. In reality, it comes down to dice. Um, How does he feel about winning? Winning, yeah. He wasn't, like, there's two parts of Brooks where like part of him isn't that fussed about it he's like you know it, it it is what it is and then part of him's like no this is great a because he's very competitive and b because I don't want to spoil too much but like we have seen flashes of like he does have a manipulative 
and the idea to him that in front of the group he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other melee character and what we all know was down to the dice but from a character perspective was like a really rough fight like mm -hmm. to him that's a sense of like oh well i've just clearly shown everyone that i know what i'm doing and don't get in my way so he feels like he's on cloud nine this is also like vindication, right? That you could, yeah. like, if worse comes to worse, you could hold yourself. If, if one something, one against if something backstory-wise came up, yeah. and someone in the party was like, "No, you need to sit down. We need," and he's like, "No, I'm leaving," and like got into an altercation. In his mind, he could take on anyone. Won't be one. Maybe struggle a little with someone like a Lazarin or Kest because. Casty wizard shit that he doesn't necessarily God, have a great knowledge. You get your of. hands on a Lazarin once, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, he well, that's gone. the thing. He's he like, I gone. need to close the gap. Like, if there's even a hint of a fight, I'm getting very, very close to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's that sense of like, he likes, he has problems when he doesn't feel he's in control. And something like that reinforces that, whether true or not, that belief in him that he. He has some level of control over the situation he's in. Right. Koyubes. Oh, hi, that's me. You ready? Yeah. Uh, does Elazarin see a potential pirate quest slash fight against some of these followers as more or less dangerous than the spider gang following him on land? I kind of like, think... And is he that, relieved that he's going to be on a boat for ages and not, like, dealing with this shit, or...? Weirdly, <laughs> I think a Lazarin is actually more scared of the pirate ship than he is <clears throat> the spider gang because he's been given recent information. And that's weirdly mellowed him out because now he doesn't have to... He's not in constant fear of, like, okay, I know where at least a representative is in this city. Okay, now he knows, like, now he knows the places that are danger zones he can avoid them better and also knows like okay they're not hot on my tail they think i'm where i'm yes that's where i'm heading like i'm heading towards them but i'm not like you know they're not looking in the right places for me they don't know where i am they're not he always thought in his mind they knew kind of exactly where he was or at least they're very close to mm -hmm. at all times and always like one step ahead like one step behind <laughs> him almost like you know chasing shadow whereas actually where they're slightly further afield it's kind of melted him out quite a bit and this sort of fear of the unknown that is this pirate ship where he's like we've got little information we're it's a bit of a shit deal like, like so much could go wrong in this deal like yes he was happy to drop the contract and write stuff and was like okay sure let's do it but he's like this is dodgy this like there's no guarantees here even with the guarantees we've been given they're not great for what we've been asked to do overall like for what we're being asked he's like this isn't amazing like, obviously, it's decent, but, you know, he's like, this isn't fantastic for what we could potentially be asked to do is piss off a very powerful being, in theory. And then, mm. like, you know, he has experience with ships being much prefers to land in the ocean. Like, he does, he definitely tried to get, like, a bit antsy, being like, okay, cool, right, you know. Like, yeah, he's been on the ship, and he's done the airship he's done all that but he's very much like i need to be able to leave quickly if shit goes wrong or something happens i need to be able to get out um but then also it is weirdly comforting to be away because then he knows okay they will have to be actively like right behind me now to know where i am like we are getting away from where they know i will be but then he also like as we associate with more and more people it will take that's more people to give him up you know like one of those they find out like we are on the ship they know they can probably bribe one of the crewmates who like will take any sort of money for him like yeah i traveled that guys yeah they told we overheard them say they went here and this is what they're doing like it's this weird, it's really weird dichotomy between it's the two the, it's the difference between knowing that they're chasing you yeah but knowing that they're not super close yeah versus thinking that you're probably gaining a sizable gap but having no way of knowing yeah it really plays into a fear of the unknown it really like a has a huge fear of the unknown but also 
because a lot of his life has been unknown, especially like with this, you know, with this group that following him and all that, he's kind of like rest assured of that. He's almost like, I can deal with that. That's a fear I can deal with and I have been dealing with. Whereas like new shit and more people, he's there like, fuck, this can go like, the more it goes on, he's like, the more things can go wrong here. And not just for me, but for these people now are like, he feels he has a duty of care with the group. You know, he has that with a lot of places. He, <clears throat> it comes with being like the cleric almost. It comes with being, he is a cleric. He is used to going to places and being like, cool, I'm caring for these people. I'm looking after this thing, you know, whether it be like a trade agreement or whatever. Because he feels he has this duty of care with this group. He's like, I gotta make sure this group doesn't get killed under my watch. If they do stupid shit and it's, I'm not there or I'm away from it, that's not on me. But if I'm right there and I don't do something to like stop this shit from happening, Mm -hmm. that's on me even if it isn't he he feels he has that duty to care um overall even if he even if he doesn't he feels he does <laughs> <clears throat> it's so wild that like a Lazarin sat here thinking that like he's plus fucking after everyone and then everyone else in the party is very like themselves for themselves yep you know like even though Lazarin is he's for himself but he still feels like he has to like take the group into account It's it's just like a crazy. It's a very weird, like drastic change from like campaign one. Yeah. Which is really fun to roleplay through because you have all these people who are, like, there are they are making those relationships, but like they're sort of very apprehensive with each other, and it's like these mm. are people that I can I can vibe with and I can travel with, and that's fine. But like, everyone's almost keeping each other at arm's length. Mm -hmm. and then slowly little bits are being forced out and nobody's really like nobody really wants to be super open with it everyone's very cagey yeah yeah but i fucking love that i love that this portion of like a DD group where you're still a bit like you're starting to reveal some little bits and you drop in like hints and you, you sort of say something you go oh fuck i shouldn't have said that in front of these people because now they're gonna remember it like later on mm -hmm. but then also you can be like super like go fuck yourself you know like super just Insular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an interesting Ethan. experience so far. Yeah. Uh, witnessing all of that from like the oh. the passenger seat, really, because that inner party like relationship and stuff. That's all you guys. I don't really do much about mm -hmm. that. It's just like, oh, I'll let it happen. Uh, it'll be fine. My backstory is never gonna. Kill <laughs> Bill alarms. What do you think? Uh, so... This is when I find out that like certain individuals in Brooks's backstory decided that hey there might be more business for the job that we do over in the new continent <clears throat> and then it starts to get like complicated as shit they come back be like your vacation's over Brooks go come back to work yeah go come back to gravy man go come back to gravy <laughs> man <laughs> wait what give in son fuck uh, oh. shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> all right any more questions Yes, mm. um, so Bell asked, Ethan, does Brook regret asking Kess the questions he did as they were making the statue? Absolutely. <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, like, if Brooks... <sighs> Brooks is, like, torn in this mental mentality of... He wants to be the one that knows things that other people don't, because that makes him feel safe. Having something that he could potentially manipulate or threaten mm -hmm. like it sounds it is really manipulative behavior but like yeah but yeah but that's his, that's his, that's his entire yeah, but i laugh because yeah. like Aladdin's exactly the fucking same yeah yeah <laughs> it's that sense of like yeah but, but with Aladdin, it's very obvious yeah. that that is that yeah, exactly a, a trait he possesses whereas brooks is yeah. it's, it's brooks not is, Bro much, i mean brooks as much. a character like yeah. you know he is a con man and a charlatan and it seems like just a big cunt. Whenever he like, we'll play cards together, and people are like, oh, Bro everyone's suspicious of Brooks, but then no one ever expects him to do anything like that isn't a hundred percent genuine outside of that. And like, there's definitely times where like he will say or do things either to get a rise out of people or to change things that he wants to change. And with Kess, it's that sensation of like he's told Kess a few things. He's not told Kess everything. With the understanding that now there's that sort of like dynamic of you know secrets about me, you can trust me. 
because at the end of the day, even if we fall out, you know, it's that like mutual destruction. Or it, Brooks is at the very least setting up the premise of like that, like mutual trust slash destruction, depending how it goes. And there's this almost like there's this sensation of he wanted to pry more because mm -hmm. it's super interesting, but also he doesn't want that to backfire to the point where there's another big like inter-party argument because he found out stuff and it's like certain things he's like yeah cool you know i have to know and then certain things he's like you you need to to talk to dagon about this especially because he his biggest problem with the conversation he had with kess is that he again like from a nip a manipulative sense tries to be on everyone's good side and mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be involved in arguments between Kess and Dagon again he doesn't want Dagon to turn around <clears throat> and be like well you told Brooks mm -hmm. which you know has happened so yeah. it's that sensation of like he isn't like scared of it or anything but also like he's gonna try and play it He's going to try and manipulate things in the way that he thinks is best for him. And that's the way he approaches everything. Mm. What a piece of shit. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's something that, like, hasn't come up in a while because, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since I was on Discord, but, like, Brooks... Brooks... There are moments where Brooks, as a character does something that is completely against this idea of being manipulative or mm. of not actually caring for these people. He does something that, like, is, like, genuinely nice mm. for someone. And it surprises himself. And he's like, do I actually care about people? Mm. Nah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> being manipulative and, like, you know, like, try almost gaslighting himself into this sensation of... Yeah. Uh justifying the way that he is and trying not to form those bonds when clearly they're already because yeah. you know like he has done things that have shown that he cares about people he just doesn't want to admit it least of all to himself i think as well i think elasmin has picked up on i mean quite early on elasmin picked up on like brooks that like didn't let him do sort of anything really like he would try and push elasmin so away and he's like fucking no i know what's happening here like I know exactly what you're trying to do. I know, like, but it's why ha that makes sense because, like, Elasmin any... has a history of dealing with. I mean, and also he is that person as well. It's yeah. that, like, he. The amount of times, like, Elasmin has pushed for something and he knows the one person he has to convince is Brooks. So he'll try and always, like, frame it towards Brooks a little bit and, and like, but not intentionally. He wouldn't, like, he wouldn't, like, directly say Brooks, but he'll just say stuff that will be, like, he knows, or at least he thinks Brooks will be, like, that's agreeable. Or at least if there's an argument he knows that would be like a good middle ground. So we'll start being more agreeable. So he's like, I've got Brooks on side. I could probably, he will probably <laughs> do the work for me to get the others on side. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's this whole thing of like Brooks like being manipulative and Elazarin yeah. thinking that he's manipulating Brooks yeah. and Brooks, Brooks thinking that he's manipulating Elazarin. Yeah, it's this circle where they both know what the fuck the other one is doing, but don't realize they're not doing anything. <laughs> like, yeah. that's just kind of happening. Um, I think I think it's really sort of it's cool to see and I kind of can't wait to see when the conflict happens on that when they finally like have a proper disagreement and go it's that well fuck you <laughs> like you know what you're talking about you know that sort of proper like we hard disagree and there's no middle ground for us at this moment and someone else has to try and get the one of the others on board I'm fucking diving some I'm not having this yeah, yeah literally that like I, I feel like Elasrin and Brooks are much less likely to be like outwardly oh, no. against each other though. Like it's not gonna be like a oh, oh it's definitely point away bullshit. his tea. I'm gonna put no, him tea. Literally <laughs> what our, our one would be super like just talking to the others, being like, God, can you, can you believe what Brooks has been doing? And it's like, well, can you believe what Elasrin's been doing? Yeah, it's that like it'd be super the campfire, like run watch together type, like on watch with someone else and being like we gotta deal with the Brooks situation, man. Like, oh, it's that, like, I, I don't even think Brooks would do that to a Lazarin. I think Brooks oh, a Lazarin would. would. Start, He's a like, petty bitch. <laughs> Brooks, 
would sit there Literal and he'd be like, school piece what can I do to, like, either make him seem less valuable, or yeah. make him realize he that he's him. in the wrong, or, like, yeah. undermine him, make his ideas seem stupid, like, anything yeah. like that. Yeah, whereas, like, I was going to try and turn the party, not turn the party against Bridge, but at least it'd be like, come to my way of thinking, or at least can you see what I'm trying to say so you can see that Brooks is being a fucking, like... The irony of all this shit, and then, yeah. like, when eventually they both get over themselves, they're probably yeah. going to be best friends. Yeah, that's the, wor that's the worst that I'm looking for. <laughs> like, it's the worst thing I'm looking forward to, in the sense of, like, it's like, God, it's going to be such a pain in the ass when these two are, like, good friends, because fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. the, the world's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well... They both have that very sort of like. Maybe one of them will die before we get to that point. Oh, Lazarus! Mm -hmm. Like, oh, if we're talking about this, Lazarus is the first to die in this fucking campaign. Oh, he's too. You think? He's so weak. At, he's. I got so little HP. I rolled so shit on HP that, like, yeah, man, all it takes is one big thing, and I'm. Yeah, gone. but. To the same extent. Did you roll a one at all? No, but I've rolled okay. like a two and a three. Okay. Like I've rolled like two below par numbers. I'm saying because you get a you get one free reroll on a one. Yeah, no, HP. but big 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 eight incoming next level up. Hopefully, <laughs> I can finally like get to the you got thirty it, bro. mark. You got it, bro. Just take the average at this point, my guy. No, I think even you God. God. Um, okay. any more questions? I think there's yes, one more. There's one more for Koibi. Uh, is Lazarin more anxious about the Spidey Gang now that he knows they're so close on his tail? Does he worry about what paranoia could do to the party given their personality? So, as I said sort of previously, yes and no. Like, not really. If anything, he's less paranoid. But he's act he is actually really concerned about the paranoia in the party. And it was one of the reasons why Elazarin didn't want to bring it up the way it happened as well. And didn't want to bring it up for a little bit because he knew that the, react like this. that the party would start looking at every opportunity and he knows they're trying to do it out of like kindness to a Lazarus and also for, like self-preservation because they know they're now traveling with him so they gotta look out but it's that like you know they're looking at like everyone now you know especially like Davian really keeping a lookout and being like fucking you know, get down you know they're, like the bent like the, they're hiding in the cart and shit like that and you know, which which good. It's main meant that we can't be on his tail anymore. But also like a Lazarin really doesn't want this paranoia because it's very much he thought his problem. You know, and he's not it's not that he's not used to other people taking on his problems, because he is. But it's more like he's like, This is my thing. I'll deal with it how I'll deal with it and like, you know, it will come out eventually and we'll 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 deal with it then um because he doesn't want it's almost weird he doesn't want that spotlight on him to be like this is the problem we're now dealing with for you he's more than happy to go with everyone else and be like cool we'll do your thing because i dear god i don't want to face my past i don't want to face what i'm having to deal with like i would rather do anything else right now and he hates that the attention keeps on being drawn back. Be like, oh fuck, do we? Do they want to check this barkeeper to see if he's in hill? Fuck, we can't trust these people in power because you know, ones if they're part. You know, he he <laughs> likes being more subtle. At least he believes he likes being more subtle. Or at least, or it's trying to be more. But also, like, you know, he has been warned that the people he cares about are going to be in trouble. And he's like, well, as this sphere of people that I care about grow, as the more time he spends at the party. And like he fucking hates this group of assholes, but you know they're like his group of assholes. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's like it's when like, someone you keep like, in mind as shits well. on your best friend. Yeah. Um. When did the party find out about the spiderweb people? The P. God, it was quite early on because I, I told out. it was when it was the thirtieth of Yume. So, so it's been uh, exactly a week. We've known for a week. But like, like what? But, but like, session wise, um, uh, it's before session ten, I'm pretty sure. It is no, 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 no. no it's before two. we got to street then. Yeah. Uh, so it's. So what you gotta keep in mind though, yeah, is that Elazarin definitely was being watched because yeah. you went to New Daramuth before yeah. any of the party knew. Yeah, about the okay, spider gang good. and they were watching you they knew you were there yeah. which means they had eyes on you at all times they yeah. had eyes on you there you know what i mean which, so like, that's something to keep in like, keep in mind as well oh, timeline, like, timeline wise oh 100 you're right like you know 
<laughs> that, but that's that's the the almost the like arrogance of a Lazarin is that like he almost wants to go. He's he is going. Come on then, you're after me. Fucking show yourself. Yeah, I think it was right after. You yeah, travel back right from them. you travel because you you were at the farm. The cir- like Bell said, yeah. the circus bit, which was on your way yeah. back from yeah. Sethka, New Daramuth, uh, yeah. Southwold, Eldilon. So. Yeah. Like they were watching you in a, in, in New Era with way be, like yeah. before any way of the party knew about it, knew, yeah, knew about exactly, him. and that's when, that's where like <laughs> I say as well he he does have this arrogance he does have this like as he said he wants to be out in the open so more people can see him because he knows this is something that gets swept under the rug by them mm-hmm. and if they've got high people in high power in high places they will be the type of people who can bribe or say no this gets swept under the rug this is you know we don't investigate that he's doing this you know those people that get that can be influenced it wasn't there so he knows. Got stabbed. that was when the orc thing on the road happened but the party knew yeah. about the spider gang before then yeah you did know about the spider gang before you got stabbed well, like we, uh, no, oh okay, the, no the, it we, came out on the car we as like, players told, knew before then yeah uh brooks didn't know until Back. Yeah, no, I think that's when the entire party found out. I think you you told Danny before then. But, but I like, told yeah. them before that. Learned and then... that the Spider Gang was looking for him yeah. when you guys were like on your way back from killing the Hydra. Yeah. You know, you were back yeah. on your way to, to Eldilon. That's when Elazar yeah, when... knew. Oh, they're looking for yeah. me. When he then told Davian, yeah, he didn't expect Davian to then reveal to the group. <laughs> That's well, the I thing think, he kind of hated a lot. I think I think the way it got revealed to the group was because Davin was like, I'm about to get down. the cart, get the fuck down. And the rest of the party was like, what the fuck is this about? Yeah. I That's mean, how that, the I rest mean, of the group it, It's out. the way, like I say, like it, it had to come out sooner or later, anyways. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm glad it did. Because obviously, we've got a lot of RP from, we've got a lot of like story that can now be told because yeah. it's more out. But also, like, <clears throat> it was one of these things that I always wanted to drip feed individually, quite like. Oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> like not to alarm y'all, but because it's quite a, you know, he was then bombarded by questions and bombarded by things. He was like, fucking, you know, Jesus, he I just want to have control of it. He did have control of the situation, he didn't have control of like, you know, he would have described it in a more different way and made it less like sinister almost. He would have made it seem like, oh, it's just this group, right? <laughs> like, by the way. It's just this group that have people in, in a lot of places of power yeah. spread around the yeah. world. Now they're, yeah. I'm, they're looking, I'm on their shit list, by the way. It's, ju- it's just the it's shadow just the Illuminati. Yeah, it's literally just it's the Illuminati. No big deal. Right. Literally, literally yeah. the Illuminati. Organized yeah. government yeah. isn't real. Yeah. <laughs> like, they it's have just some new... members in some places where you're like, shit, dude. Like, fuck. You know it's I mean? just a new world they have order people shadow in places where we shit. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, All I, the I mean, like... <laughs> they have people what the in places fuck is where guard? when you find out you're gonna be like oh shit you know what i mean oh like, yeah i can't wait to fucking oh i can't wait for, <laughs> the, the empress transforms into a dragon just still has the tattoo it's like oh fuck <laughs> i don't that, see the empress it's gonna be but, that extreme. Uh, maybe <laughs> fucking um uh b- 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 what's her name no. uh fucking uh Tranlil. that would be a big oh. I don't, mm, fucking, maybe not, maybe not Tranliel, but absolutely someone on like the fucking council. Yeah, There's got to be someone. Has, definitely has Better not be Peter Riz. Oh, I'll be so heartbroken. <laughs> what if it's <laughs> Father so Ackle? Oh, I mean, Alandra suspects Father Ackle from the fucking start. He doesn't trust that man. He trusts him, but he's like, he's like, it's shady shit. Because he knows that they go for churches a lot first. Because it's the, the easiest place to influence most people. The I'm not going to say shit. Yeah. yeah, no, you're not. I know you're not. So that's why hey, man, we're it's weird. The fucking carpenters guild got me. That I think like, I think we checked that Blackpool. Makes a lot of sense. I think we checked, we checked Blackpool. I think you did, yeah. We, <clears> we checked. <throat> I tried to check Ackle, but didn't get a high result. I got like an eight, and I couldn't really see shit. Or and I think so. Tranlia wasn't originally, but then the whole shooting was so that she could be replaced with a body double who is part of the saucy spider gang. Changeling. Stop. I've, do you know what? I've <laughs> joked about this theory since the start of the campaign that she actually died or was taken away when she was shot, and they used that chaos to replace her with someone else. Nah, like this be... fucking spooky spider gang was behind the fucking you want yeah. attacks. <laughs> they were behind. They were behind. <laughs> like you know, they they did something to manipulate that to make the you want 
I mean, it's the type of shit they do, to be fair. Well, failing that, <laughs> we don't even know for definite like that... that. <laughs> you know, like, we don't know for definite that it was a UNT that shot her. We don't know that set in stone, do we? We, ma we, we have made followed heavy the path. assumptions. Yeah, but we never, like, actively saw... Oh, yeah. So, who knows, man? Like, that could have been, like, so... That's what I love about... This is what I love about the Nightwebs, is that they... Everything that happens, you're like, fuck, is it them? And I love that so much that you can, like... You can't trust anything. And it's very conspiracy theory. Like I say, it's Illuminati shit. It's very <laughs> tinfoil hat, like... They're controlling everything, man. <laughs> That yeah. tree wasn't there yesterday, you prick. It's moved. <laughs> like, what? It's good, man. I love that shit. Uh, love it. <clears throat> it's getting to that time where we're uh, yeah. typically the wrap up. So uh, unless yeah. there's anything you're pressing that you guys want to talk about. Um, I always end the episodes with a little bit of a tease for next session. And I think all I have to say for next session is uh, that... Uh, Y'all are gonna have to really think about what you're gonna do once you get into the vicinity of New Dharamoth, because one wrong move can make a lot of changes. We're gonna hand in a last ring. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Just me tied your <laughs> like, here ye! <laughs> but yeah, uh, even better when it's not the real last ring. Oh, True. yeah. So yeah, that's all, that's all I'll say. Um, thanks so much for watching, oh. everybody. Uh, thanks for being here, yeah. guys. I had a blast no talking time. nerdy shit with you guys. Yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> we'll be back on Sunday. For a Sunday, new Sunday, dungeon Sunday, select. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Peace out, everybody. See you guys Ooh, later. Bye. 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 Bye.